Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna talk about another topic from the gastrointestinal set. And what I wanna talk about today is one of those very, very messy problems, diarrhea. We've all had it and none of us have enjoyed it. If you have, you're crazy. But the bottom line, it gets divided up into a few types. So have you ever had the time where you get nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, dehydration, bloating, it just feels like nothing is going through. You also are running to the bathroom in a flash heat and you're, more importantly, you're afraid to pass gas. That is crazy stuff, I don't care who you are. And so today we're gonna talk a little bit about diarrhea and how you can take care of it and, and what you need to think about. So let's start. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Nene, a US trained cardiac, thoracic and vascular surgeon and a general surgeon as a healthcare innovator and a health tech innovator, I want to empower you to your best health ever. On this channel, we will share evidence-based medicine from all of us to you through our experiences and training about health and health care. The goal is to help you make informed decisions about your own health as well as that of your loved ones. We're here for you, so don't hesitate to reach out. Acute diarrhea is generally something you get and it starts from the, the tip of the tongue down to the bottom of the tail. And what that means is you'll, it takes about 24 hours to go from the top to the bottom. If it comes from uh, viral causes or from bacterial causes, it's very typical that you might get nausea and vomiting first, and then later after some time, get the secondary effects with abdominal pain, bloating, and then finally start to have loose motions. And the idea is, um, in the acute setting, it can be caused by multiple things. But what was amazing as we were researching this talk is we found that diarrhea in the US is often caused by rotavirus and it leads to a huge number of people getting sick. But more importantly, in the developing world, it can account for 40% of hospitalizations in all children under five years of age. So what is the cause of diarrhea? There can be many. There can be viral in the way of rotavirus or which generally cause viral gastroenteritis. In addition, there can be bacterial gastroenteritis, which includes Salmonella E. coli, Shigella. Then there can be parasitic infections in the way of amoeba and giardia. And then in addition to that, there can be more chronic types of things with intestinal disease, which can come into the play. Finally, there's other types of things like uh, lactose intolerance or you can have diarrhea from um, uh, food allergies. Today, we're gonna talk more about the acute types of diarrhea. And in the US, the majority of that comes from bad food handling or spoiled food, otherwise what we call food poisoning. In the developing world though, most of that comes from poor sanitation and bad water. And in fact, rotavirus in particular accounts for 40% of all uh, illnesses in children under five in the developing world. And a huge amount of mortality, meaning people dying from it still. So it's not a small problem at all. So now you're a patient who comes in. How do I assess you? When I see a patient with bad diarrhea, I'm looking for all of the signs and symptoms, dry mucous membranes, uh, decreased skin turgor. I'm looking for fatigue in that patient. I'm also looking for lightheadedness, headaches, um, as well as increased thirst, decreased urination. Those are the kind of hallmarks of the effects of really bad diarrhea. And when you have those, the key is you need to get hydrated fast. Tough one with either viral or bacterial gastroenteritis is that you often cannot get enough fluid in to keep up with your uh, losses, either from the diarrhea or alternatively from the fact that you just can't take things in because you feel bloated and you feel nauseous. And it's those situations where you need to go see a doctor. Now, kids are a different situation in that they don't always complain like adults do. And there you have to be very vigilant I think if they're not taking in liquids uh, for several hours, you need to go have them seen. Because many times they can give them other ways to do it with Pedialyte or other things. But barring that, in adults as well as kids, sometimes we have to start IVs and start them on IV supplementation. The 
more dramatic thing about kids and why I, I am highlighting that is that one in nine deaths in kids below the age of five in the developing world are due to diarrheal illnesses. And so this is not a circumstance to take um, lightly. It's one which we need to identify. And the real issue is if they have sunken eyes, if they have uh, very dry lips, if they are not making any urine, they have to be taken in urgently to the closest medical center or to a doctor who can supplement that. So we talked a little bit about what the symptoms are. So how do you treat bad diarrhea? There's a couple of rules to the game. If you have diarrhea for over two days and you're not able to take enough in to supplement the fluids which you're losing, and alternatively, if you're having bad abdominal pain, high fevers, or any of the other side effects, you need to go see a doctor immediately. Other than that, in most cases, over-the-counter remedies will help you to some degree. And the main thing is to avoid things which will dehydrate you, like alcohol or caffeinated drinks, and to take bland foods in the way of rice and, if you will, the brat diet sometimes helps. Bananas, rice, apple sauce, and um, tea. Now, the interesting part is tea may help you with the nausea and some of the other things, but it'll also increase the diarrhea in some cases. Let's say that doesn't work and you're worried about this. In the worst cases, you're gonna go in and they're gonna put an IV in and hydrate you. Alternatively, the way you can hydrate is with electrolyte solutions. And the simplest one is orange juice with some uh, soda bicarb in it will actually um, work to replete your electrolytes. But in the Western countries, you would end up taking one of the off-the-shelf electrolyte solutions or uh, alternatively one of the uh, sports drinks which have this type of fluid in it which has both balanced electrolytes and a little bit of sugar um, because you can feel pretty bad. How can you avoid having diarrhea to begin with? And living in, in India, I can tell you every single one of us have had it, but I've had it in the US as well. So it's a little different on where you live. In the US, most of the diarrhea is due to food poisoning. And the key to that is you don't eat things which have been sitting in the fridge or been contaminated or mishandled. You don't eat raw foods which you know have been sitting around. And the likelihood of you having diarrhea is much lower. In India, it's an age old saying that avoid ice, avoid non-filtered or non-bottled water when you're out, avoid fresh fruits, avoid street food. Now with a few exceptions, that kind of advice will do it. And to be honest, in India, the, the main struggle is two. One is bad water, and the second is lack of sanitation. And then the third within that is, it's not the food preparation which causes the diarrhea in most cases. It's the food handling. And so if you're going to a place which does not have those adequate kind of things and the food is uncooked or it's raw, the likelihood of you getting diarrhea is much higher. Lastly, how do you prevent this from going from person to person? Well, the truth is if you're gonna isolate yourself because you're running to the toilet all the time, you're gonna be isolated to begin with. But the key is good hand washing techniques. Um, the key is making sure you cook your uh, vegetables and meat and fruit and whatever you are eating. And then the key is not to share from someone who's got a current episode of gastroenteritis. So in a nutshell, gastroenteritis is often preventable, whether you're in the Western world or, or in the developing world. The key is to use your head when you're going out and then the other point which I'm making is know the telltale signs of when you absolutely need to go see a doctor, particularly in kids, because this is still a big problem in India and in the Western world. And if you miss the opportunity, it can lead to catastrophic results. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you like what I'm saying, hit the like button. If you uh, wanna see more episodes, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so that when we put up a new episode, you can join in. Anyway, thanks for joining us and I'll talk to you soon.